Ladies and gentlemen, and now a very special edition of Kicking It with Chrissy. Chrissy Andrews, my bitch, Bucha. Oh, <laughs> Chris I Andrews. wish I could have designed that myself. <laughs> I don't know if you'll, you'll remember this, but like when I was a kid, and they would have like, let's take a show like Different Strokes, okay. right, with Gary Coleman. If it was like, the, you know, they'd have like, oh, haha, episodes five, six, seven in a row. And then like the one where like Todd Bridges or who did it? Willis. The one where Willis was like, took drug, like, like oh, yeah. grabbed, it was right. sold drugs at school. They would, the promo would be like a now for a very special edition of Different Strokes. The very special <laughs> comedies. I hated those. Yeah. Very God. special oh, episode on. of Different Strokes. Yeah, right. A real life lesson here. Uh, all right. Well, this is a very special. No, no, by the way, oh, this, this is a good one. This is a good That's special a good, edition. Yeah. yeah, it has nothing to do with. Nobody's going to be in tears. I don't think at the end of this. No. So, so let's just set the stage again. Spanky was kind enough to come on the show yesterday, um, and he was talking about Bet Bash. Now, Bet Bash Three is happening at Circa in August, August eighth through eleventh. BetBash.co for all the ticket information for Bet Bash. And I, I was not at the original Bet Bash, but I was at Bet Bash Two. I was honored to uh, moderate one of the panels. It is the greatest conference of any kind one could imagine in sports betting. Um, it was just everybody was there. Chrissy, you were there. All the all the greats like yourself were there. And it was just, it, it's worth the price just for the networking. Forget the panels, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, the panels, which are awesome. But just for the networking, it's worth it. It's a who's who of sports betting. So August 8th through 11th at Bet Bash, and one of the or the biggest development of this year's Bet Bash Three is that Spanky has decided to start his sports gambling Hall of Fame, which is massive. And three names have already been announced, and they are the again the Babe Ruth and the Ty Cobb and the Walter Big Train Johnson, which is uh, Billy Walters and Roxy Roxborough, your friend, my friend, and of course, Lefty Rosenthal. Those are the three names that have been announced. You have the honor here on this show today. Yeah. We are honored to have you have the honor of announcing names four and five. And you, the difference with you and everyone else is, Chris, you know all these people. I know these guys. And that's why Spanky wanted me to introduce them. You know, so, uh, you know, uh, should we get started here? Please, Let's absolutely. Start. Well, I would take exception to one thing you said. Uh -oh. I have Babe Ruth. You have Babe Ruth. I have That's Babe Ruth. That's true. You do. I have Babe Ruth. You do, actually. Well, let's start with Babe Ruth. Okay. Also known as Bob Martin. Bob Martin. Bob Martin. And I had the pleasure through through my Uncle Jack. And we were... My father passed away in 1970. My Uncle Jack got indicted in 1970 for betting, you know, all kind of crazy stuff. Beat all the indictments, by the way. Uh, but moved to Vegas then. And uh, he was, you know, like a second father to me. And we were flying us back and forth from Pittsburgh to Las Vegas, you know, quite often. Uh, me and my cousin, Zach, uh, Jack's son. And we were fortunate enough that my Uncle Jack would bring us to lunch with some of the luminaries of, the, of our, our world. And uh, Zach and I both were smart enough to keep our mouths shut <laughs> and listen to what these guys said. And we talked all the time, like, this was the business we wanted to go into from the time we were probably 10 years old. I said, well, you know, with the education we're getting, there, there'd be no excuse to not succeed in this business, except it'd be on us for being a bunch of idiots, you know. But we were learning at the feet of the masters, and the master was Bob Martin. And Bob was kind enough to share knowledge with us uh, about the bookmaking industry. Now, he also handicapped, and he, he did some betting as well, you know, but he was primarily a bookmaker and talked about, Everything from setting the line to managing the money, you know, to paying and collecting, all sorts of things. I mean, that, like I said, he he is without a doubt the Babe Ruth of this industry. Isn't the headline of Bob Martin that you know? Here, if those of us who who live in this day and age, we you know, okay, well, those lines emanate from offshore and right. then they're copied. Those, but Bob Martin. A, the line, the betting line, yeah. didn't come from anyone else but this one human being. Right. And that's, you know, when you say, what was, it? like, now you say, what was, what's the opening line? Okay, well, you know, Circa opened at this, Westgate did this, you know, Offshore, Chris did this, Pinnacle did this, you know, might have a myriad of different lines, and they're probably fairly close. But back in the day, when you said, what was the opening line, it was Bob Martin's opening line. How did Bob Martin become that guy? First of all, Bob, <laughs> I heard somebody describe him once, if you saw Bob, he looked almost like a Dr. Seuss character. I mean, he might have like a, a striped 
you know, a pinstripe suit and a plaid shirt. He never wore a tie. He never wore a tie. But he he looked like halfway comical, you know, just the way he was. And the thing was, too, if you knew Bob, he was a total ball buster and hilarious, one of the funniest guys you'd ever meet. But he had that brilliant mind. And, and I always said, you know, guys who are really, really funny are smart. Absolutely. They're smart. And that was Bob. He had a knowledge just a wealth of knowledge. We didn't have computers back in those days. There was no Google or anything like that. He kept all those records, you know, by hand. You know, I don't even think he had an assistant. But he, he just had, like, such a depth of knowledge with uh, football primarily, but I'd say basketball as well. And when you talked about what was the opening line, it was Bob Martin for football and basketball. And I know today, and it's because, and I've had sort of a, you know, a di- disagreement with some of the guys who just closing CLV, closing lines. That's the only thing that matters. And, you know, like I said that's something that's become the truth. Back in the day, if Bob Martin opened a game six and you wound up taking seven and a half, I don't care where it closed. He says, well, Bob made a game six. I'm taking seven and a half. You know, I, it, believe me, you did pretty good. You it know, was it was closing Bob Martin. Was, yeah, it was. Yeah. But you're, you're, you know, you're going with, you know, Bob opened at six. Yeah. I'm taking seven and a half. You know, I'm going to, I think I'm going to be okay. Bob Martin to be inducted in the sports gambling hall of fame. This is how influential Bob Martin was. And this is a true story. He ran Churchill Downs. Now this is back in the day. We just had the grease board. Churchill Downs. He's not, Chrissy is not referring to Churchill Downs in Kentucky. Right. These are how the sports books were named back in the day. Yeah. This was the biggest sports book in Las Vegas was Churchill Downs. There's other ones. There was the Saratoga. There was the Rose Bowl. There was Santa Anita the Del Mar, all kinds. But Churchill Downs was the place, and that was Bob who set the line there and was he, he ran the joint. <laughs> so this was an obscure game. I think it was – I think they told me it was Miami of Ohio playing Toledo, and this is in college basketball. And I'm, this part I'm making up. Toledo was like a seven-point favorite. Bob gets on the phone, and he's talking, nodding his head. Yeah, sure, okay. Goes out. Goes to the board. Toledo was a seven-point favorite. He makes it three. Just sits down. <laughs> they had the, the phone, the bank of pay phones outside, which were the most profitable, and I'm not joking, the most profitable pay phones in the United States. Everybody ran to the phone, you know, taking the seven, taking the seven, taking the seven, because Bob made it three. They came back in five minutes later. Bob erased the three, went back to seven. <laughs> Just, just to mess with people. Just, just to mess with people. Because he could. Because he could. And that what shows you the influence. Because if Bob said the game was seven, it's seven. If Bob said the game's three, it's three. <laughs> and, he went, and it was one of those, he just would be that kind of a guy. For historical sake, what would you say is the year range where Bob Martin was the, the guy who generated lines globally? Uh, I'd say from the early 60s through uh the the mid to late 80s whoa what a run yeah he, no bob was the guy and he find you know he you know like it's gonna happen to all of us he got old and sick and sure you know and he actually did a stint in prison but he was uh funny about you know the way he did it you know, just even talking to bob uh one of the things was uh he, he said you know because i mean listen he was in with you know congressmen and judges and you know, white collar criminals. He said, geez, I hated getting out in the middle of October. I was getting six to five from all these guys. <laughs> it's probably true. Uh, and the other thing was uh, when the Supreme Court, you know, finally decided in his favor, somebody bet him that it would be 9 0 in his favor. And he bet against it because one guy, I can't remember the judge. So he won eight to one. He says, I can't believe it. I middled the Supreme Court decision. Betting on his own Supreme Court <laughs> that, ruling. That was Bob. I mean, what was the charge, by the way? Do you remember specifically? Oh, probably bookmaking. You know, I can't remember Some, exactly. But he actually went to prison. And I, you know, we, and I knew him well enough that we corresponded while he was in prison. You know, and wow. he, he, you know, I mean, he gave me a wedding present and, you know, all, all that sort of stuff. I'm, but I was, like I said, I was smart enough to keep my mouth shut and listen to what Bob Martin had to say. The beauty of so many of these are the, is the casual aside of, yeah, you know, he went to prison for a while. But anyway. I mean, in our world, that does not lower your esteem to at, me. I can tell you that. All. Might even do the opposite. Might do the opposite. Might exactly. do the opposite. Bob Martin, the fourth name, the Babe Ruth of this industry. Bob Martin 
inducted into the Sports Gambling Hall of Fame. That will be August 8th through 11th at Bet Bash, and he will have someone uh, accepting the honor in, on his behalf, of course. Mm-hmm. Name number five on the other side with Chrissy Andrews exclusively right here on a numbers game at Visa, the Sports Betting Network. Usually I read a bunch of tweets at this time, but we're doing obviously the Sports Gambling Hall you of Fame. You don't want to read that one tweet? The one? <laughs> no, I don't want to read the one. I do not. <laughs> some of these are so funny. We'll read some of these tomorrow, but it just seems out of place right now, stuff that Kelly and I were talking about in previous segments. Uh, I will read this one text, not that one text, but another text. Oh, uh, Felica said, a very special Moesha, he said. <laughs> Who said <laughs> that? Felica? Felica, yeah. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> all right, so this is, if you're tuning in again, Sports Gambling Hall of Fame. It is a very special kicking it with Chrissy uh, because uh, Spanky was on yesterday, and uh, we have the honor, I have the honor, and Chrissy has the honor, to uh, name the fourth and fifth names that are being inducted to the Sports Gambling Hall of Fame at Bet Bash 3 in August, August 8th through 11th at Circa, betbash.co for all the information. So you just mentioned Bob Martin as the fourth name to go in, and now mm. name number five is someone you knew even better than that. I probably knew them both pretty good, you know. So if I call Bob uh, Babe Ruth, what would I call this guy? Jeez, uh, let me think. Ty Cobb, maybe. Okay. Like right around that thing. And we're going to announce it, Jackie Gone. Jackie who, Gone. Jackie Gone, who I had, you know, such great pleasure to meet. And again, when my Uncle Jack... Uh, was, you know, taking us to lunch. You know, Bob was there. Some other guys who, you know, whose names are unfortunately going to be lost to history unless we get them in to the Sports Gambling Hall of Fame. We, you know, but there's only so many we put in every year. Guys like Bob Black, Joe Snyder, Bobby Brent, great names. But uh, another guy who was often at those lunches was Jackie Gone. And I knew Jackie Gone before I knew he had this kid named Michael who was you know, starting up some casinos. And, you know, I, little did I know how, uh, how influential the Gone family would be in my life. You know, but Jackie was one of those guys. And I got, like I said, I was you know, 14, 15, you know, until I was you know, in college, you know, going to these lunches and smart enough to keep my mouth shut and listen to these guys who just were, like I said, I, I, don't, I don't care what field of study you're in, you know, maybe medicine, but other than that, there's no way you could get the depth of knowledge I had just from just from listening to these guys who were, you know, the 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 fathers of this industry and Jackie, and Jackie and I just kind of you know hit it off. We liked each other, you know. But Jackie was that kind of way with a lot of people. I don't want to make me sound like all that special. Jackie was a very gregarious person, and uh, when I was working for Michael at the Barbary Coast. I, you know, I, I did a stint on Graveyard for a while, but then I was doing swing shift. I was kind of like the swing shift supervisor. And I had a lot of responsibility kind of that I went into in uh, one of my books, which, by the way, are we going to mention one of my books? We absolutely gonna... should mention okay. your books. Um, multiple books. Okay. Which order would you like to say? First well, of all, let's start then one day because there's some w- stories in there. Absolutely. So you, you were kind enough for years to come on the Beating the Book podcast, and we did something called Story Time at the yeah. end of Guessing Lines. Okay. And it became wildly popular. Like, no one cared about the Guessing Lines part after a while because <laughs> your stories were so great. And story and those were the, it's basically the audio version of yeah. Then One Day, which you added yeah. stories to. So Then One Day, followed by Then One Year. Yeah. Which, was which is more book. for people in our industry, I'd say. It was the year of COVID, which I yeah. didn't intend that to happen, but it did. And then, of course, my novel. Adolfo Smo. Adolfo Smo. Adolfo Smo. I'm very proud of the novel, you know. Your novel uh, was great, by the yeah, way. Yeah, thank you. I pre- The yeah. reviews have been great. I just need to get it out there more into the public, and yeah. I'm trying to do that. But then but, one day, just that we, yeah, we triggered this, but then one day has a lot of these Bob Martin and Jackie yeah, Gone yeah. tales. By the way, and I just happened to talk to my daughter, because I knew I was doing this show, so I'm talking to my daughter yesterday. My daughter, Jackie. Not named after Jackie Gone, uh, named after my Uncle Jack. But she knows a story involving Jackie Gone and Bob Martin, and I've told her, you are permitted to tell that story at my funeral because there's no one alive right now besides me <laughs> and her, too, that knows this story. So we're not getting that story. You're not getting that story. Oh, <laughs> but I said at my funeral, and if anybody's there at my funeral, hopefully it's not going to be for a while, but my daughter Jackie has a story that she's permitted to tell at my funeral involving Jackie and Bob and 
another guy. By the way, your your funeral will occur after you are inducted into this Sports Gambling Hall of Fame one day. Yeah, Let me just not say going that. There. Yeah, I know not, you're yeah, not, I'm but not, I will. Yeah, I, yeah. Uh, Jackie gone, so we got a little historical so anyway, perspective back to on Jackie, Bob Martin. Yeah. 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 So Jackie, when I was working swing shift at the Barbary Coast, Jackie would have dinner with, you know, Michael or Kenny Epstein or Frank Toady, who were uh, Michael's partners, Tito Taberti. He would have dinner with one of them or all of them, you know, a couple times a week. But he'd always come in first, and he'd pull up a stool right next to me and just start talking about the business. You know, he'd show me this or that. I, you know, I, I this is the way I deal with this guy. And, I mean, the guys he was dealing with, you know, guys like Michael Jack, guys like Bob Martin, guys like Billy Baxter, Billy Walters. I mean, <laughs> other names that are, you know, just resonating through uh, through our industry as, as great, great men. And Jackie, you know, he told me, he says, you know, I mean, listen, you're not going to hold 5 6% booking of these guys. He says, if I could squeeze out like 1%, you know, that's pretty good, you know. And, and this guy – you know, he he would deal with, like, a lot of halftimes. Jackie was really one of the first guys to deal with halftimes, one of the first guys to deal with money lines. Jackie was one of the first to do that kind of stuff. Bob would set the line as far as, like, for the game. But Jackie was, you know, Jackie was more innovative th- than Bob. And, and Jackie the, was what? I just missed the details. He, is he Did he run? What did he run, ultimately? He, he, was, he, was, uh, he ran the El Cortez. Mm-hmm. He, that was where he kind of made his bones, essentially. But Jackie had pieces of the Union Plaza. I believe he had a piece of Churchill Downs. I'm not sure about that. Uh, Jackie had – he was with Mel Expert in the Las Vegas club. And Jackie and Mel were the first ones to use the run line in baseball, the run wow. and a half. And Jackie would sit there and talk to me. He says, you know, you realize a run and a half – is much more valuable, you know, in a game where the total's six and a half as a, as opposed to when the game when the total's ten. We didn't have Colorado in those days, so you know, ten was about the highest uh, you know the, the the total would be. And totals were kind of a new thing at the time too. So all this was just kind of being explored at the time. Uh, for for things that we just take for granted now, we take all this stuff. Take for all this for granted. It all started it's start somewhere. somewhere. You know, and yeah. Jackie was you know on on the cusp of starting it. Like I said I, before, Jackie dealt half times. I don't know anybody else that did. There probably were somebody, but I don't know who that would be. We have a picture here. This is uh, of of Jackie gone here at the chalkboard. And as we were talking about off air, for those who wonder where does the term chalk come from when we talk about favorites. Literally put up lines using a blackboard and a yeah. piece of chalk, and so favorites over the years suddenly, yeah. you know, it went from six to six and a half to seven. To, yeah. Oh, where's the chalk? Oh, that's <laughs> they keep right. betting the favorite. Oh, big, you know, boy, is that how you remember him? Changed. Looking like that, is that how you remember him? Or this is in his older years? No, that's how I remember yeah. Jackie. And by the way, that that picture is like right yeah. at the doorstep of my office, right there. You know, you can come and see it. And Jackie did where where was the where was the space station you know? <laughs> and those are things that Jackie did. And by the way, Jackie he would put that up as a, as a oh yeah he put that up till gaming made him take till, it down. You know, <laughs> that's great stuff like that. Yeah, <laughs> but, what but Jackie you? didn't care. They did okay. Yeah. A quick Jackie gone story Please. that you know I'll try to get this in. So when I worked for Warren Nelson up at the Cal Neva. Warren and Jackie were tremendous friends. As a matter of fact, that's how I got the job at Cal Neva. Jackie recommended me. Anyway, Warren one day pulls me aside, and you know this is when I became an owner and stuff. And he says, yeah, "Okay, listen to me. W- whenever you're checking out uh, people's credits, you go through all your procedure, check the bank statements and everything else. Then take a step back and look at the guy's shoes. If a guy's got crappy shoes on, I don't care what the bank statement says. He's not a good credit risk." But I'm telling you right now, that does not work for Jackie Gone. Jackie Gone might have his shoes taped together with masking tape or duct tape. He goes, but if Jackie's here and I'm not, you need Jackie can have anything he wants. You, you have my permission to give Jackie anything. And, that, and Jackie was just that kind of a character. You know, he really, I've, you know, he drove like an old beat up pickup truck or Jeep or something like Didn't that. Didn't care about such he things. No. It, it, he wore suits and like Warren would, Warren was like an immaculate dresser. Opened up Jackie's and it had the name I think was Ed Lee. <laughs> Where'd you get this? Oh, this is my dead brother-in-law because we were the same size, so I just took all his suits. Ed Lee, <laughs> I think that was the name. That's awesome. And he I have will, another one too, but we'll never get it in on time. Well, we got to run, but he, he will be inducted by your cousin 
Oh, who no, 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 no. He will be inducted by Michael Gaughan. By Michael Gaughan. By Michael Gaughan. Of course, by Michael Gaughan. Absolutely. Bob Martin, Jackie Gaughan, names four and five in the Sports Gambling Hall of Fame. Again, inducted at Bet Bash this summer, August 8th through 11th, betbash.co. Thank you, Chrissy, as always. Oh, my pleasure. And we'll induct more names over the coming weeks. Yeah. Go to vsin.com slash subscribe to become a VEASAN Pro subscriber today.